I got version nine, did you? I got autopilot on at 50 miles an hour. Right up here, the car goes crazy. You wanna be able to watch it. It is gonna be right about here. What's up everybody? I'm Brian from i1 Tesla. So I got version nine yesterday morning in my Model S. Right away, of course, we jump in the car and update it right before we went to Cars and Coffee. And it was kind of fun to actually go over some of those features with, with friends at Cars and Coffee. You know, there's a lot of videos probably today going over all the features on the giant screen here. Also showcasing on the front screen as well. As a lot of you are familiar, I'm a little different than everybody. I'm gonna show you some of the quirks and some of the cool things that I've noticed in version nine. First off, a really cool thing with the climate control if you're touching the controls here there's only one now but as soon as you hit sync two show up and then it's just that cool animation so you can actually change it and once you hit sync oops once you hit sync again it goes back to one once it goes back to one it actually moves the heated seats it doesn't move the the other three it just kind of compresses the heated seat one it's kind of a cool animation there okay. And of course, as everyone has seen this for weeks now online, the controls are down at the bottom now instead of at the top, but they do go away. So you actually have to hit the button and then hit something. So it's a two stage process to actually go to something. Camera's way over on the side. Now here's the bad thing with the camera. You can't move it up to the top if you want to. It is, what's nice about this is if you touch anywhere else, it doesn't disappear like it does in the Model 3. So that's a good part but you can't do anything with it. You, you can drop it down below, but you have to hit this again to get the, oops, wrong one. You have to hit this again to get the camera to pop up. And I wish they would have moved the camera over here more. Who really uses the web? I, I think these should have been moved around a little bit better. You always have the navigation, a lot like the Model 3, you always have the navigation up, only one extra spot down here for something. So a lot of times you don't need navigation. You know where you're going, you're in town. You wanna be able to have maybe the backup camera and music going. So if you hit the music button, it just replaces where the camera was. The music, you can go a bigger screen there and you can drop it down and make it disappear. But here's the one thing that's different than the Model 3. When you have it full screen, you make it disappear, you bring it back up, it only goes to that center section. It doesn't go back to where you had it before. Before the Model 3, wherever you left it, whether it was on the top or the bottom, when you disappear, it would come back to the exact same spot. So a little different, but it's a little bigger screen, so maybe that's why. Um, but one other thing that they changed that a lot of people were upset be with before, when you go into the settings here, now you can go back up to 12. I don't have the premium sound in this car, but you can go, uh, you can put the bass up to 12 again. Also down here, when you pull up your climate, you have keep climate on. That's for your cabin. If you want to keep your dogs or uh, people in the car, you can keep the cabin temperature on. It's kind of what people call camper mode. But over here, it doesn't really look like heated seats. It looks like something different. You have the fan, and then the heated seats are down here. So then you can turn on the heated seats. Oops, I don't want mine on. It's hot already. You can turn those on, turn the back one on. Those are the heated windshield wipers. And then you can just turn them all off, which is really nice. Can you turn them all on? No, you can't turn them all on. And of course, I'm sure you saw before, someone else has done these. The... Um, Atari games, you have to be parked, and then you can play the game. You can actually go full screen with this, which is really cool, and then you use the steering wheel controls. You use the steering wheel nipples to do this. So you can you can go full screen, and then you, uh, well, that's gonna kill me right away. But yeah, you can turn, you can shoot. If you tap it three times, it gets it out of full screen mode. So when you're in full screen mode, you use the steering wheel for the controls. The lunar game, let's go full screen. a huge fan of how the radio keeps popping up and I, I did kind of like the dual screen but I think it's a lot cleaner the way it's one screen with it popping up and down you know it's gonna take some getting used to from everyone it's it's a lot like the Model 3 and a lot of Model S people are gonna be upset about that I think it's good for the long run uh, and I think there's some ways they can tweak it a lot better 
uh, in the future, and there will be. But again, these are my early uh, thoughts on this. Uh, we just got it yesterday. It's two o'clock today. So I, have, I really haven't played with it too much. I've driven around and I'm gonna drive around for you right now. Uh, I'm on that road that I always test my Model 3 on where I was able to go uh, pretty fast on and it was able to do it pretty well. Well, the problem with autopilot now is, you know, we don't have drive-by nav on this, but the problem with the new update is navigation has to, uh, it's learning all over again. So now autopilot was really strong before and now it's back to being like a drunken 16 year old the way it drives. What are you, a cop now? Come on, you know I drive great when I'm drunk. So you really have to pay attention. You can't put any trust in autopilot right now. It's totally relearning, but we're gonna test it some more. I'm gonna drive around, I'm gonna show you all the different things on the screen. It actually shows people, which is really cool. It shows people, it shows people on bicycles, on motorcycles, trucks, everything. So we are being tracked by the drone. Hopefully it's high enough so it doesn't hit a tree. <laughs> But we're going to go down this road and go in autopilot at 20 miles an hour. We're going to put it on autopilot when we can here. Shows that guy running there, which is kind of cool. I'm at 19 miles an hour. Let's bump it up to 20. Through here. Oop. See how I'm going over the line right here. People on the side of the road there, those cars, kind of cut kind of close to them. It's doing pretty good tracking me. But this gives you a good idea of where the car is on the road, how well it's doing, how well it's staying in the lines. Now this is at 20 miles an hour. I could bump it up to 25 through this turn and you can see how squirrely it's gonna get a little bit. It doesn't really like that too much. So autopilot is a lot like what it was when we first got this car a year ago, actually almost a year ago to the date. October 18th is when we got this car. I got autopilot on at 50 miles an hour. It's 45 through here, so it allows me to go five over just like last time. Some of these roads have been different, I've noticed. But right up here, right at this second turn, the car goes crazy. You wanna be able to watch it. Uh, I've got this the car on the screen and it is gonna be right about here. It tried to run off the road. It went way to the right, which is scary. You have to be paying attention for that. You have to be ready for that. I was ready when it first happened yesterday and it still scared the crap out of me. Part of it learning, part of it doing its job, try, trying to learn on what to do. Right up here, there's a, there's a bridge that the lines aren't really uh, there anymore. It's kind of faded, so it kind of squirrels a little bit. Let me show you the wheel if it moves. It's actually not doing that bad this time. So it is learning faster, which is good. Uh, the car does sway a little bit back and forth. The wheel is moving quite a bit. Might be hard to see on the screen. Or might, might be hard to see on camera. Uh, but it doesn't stay as solid in the center as it was before. Again, it's learning. It's trying to figure out what center, what to do, how, how hard to make it go back into center. So this road right here is 150. It's not a highway. Before it wouldn't let me use the turn signal. But watch this now. It shows up the lane and it allows me to use the turn signal to move over. So we're here in this shopping mall and you can see there's some lines. There's gonna be a bunch of people through here. I'm gonna try to let a bunch of people go in front of me. That way we get to see a bunch of stuff on the screen. We're following a vehicle. Let's see if we can put it in autopilot. And it won't let us there, probably because we're going under it allows autopilot. It did not slow down for that dude at all. Did not slow down for that dude at all. I had to grab the wheel there. So it doesn't look like it's slowing down for people. It sees the people, it's just not slowing down for them. A bunch of people cutting across. They don't all show up. 
Now I'm following a semi truck without a trailer, but it shows up the semi truck with the trailer on it, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, the trailer's not on it. But I don't know if it's a Tesla semi on the front. So that's pretty cool. In front of me is a car and over there is an SUV and it shows on the screen a car and an SUV. Although I've noticed pickup trucks show up as like vans, some um, like almost like a UPS truck. Is it perfect? No, version nine is not perfect, but it's actually really good. It's really close. It's learning quite a bit, really fast, and it's just gonna get better and better. Um, just be patient with it, be safe with it, enjoy your cars, and hopefully it gets to the Model 3 fairly soon. I'd like to try it on that too. I'll catch you on the next one. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you tomorrow.